Welcome to document to platform special interest group. It's the 14th of January, 2022. Um, topics on the agenda for today, open action items, Java end of eight end of life alternatives, Linux operating system support policy. Uh, other topics may wait for another time. Tim, anything else you wanna add? Nope. Okay, so action items. I have opened the PR for to describe operating systems we test. Uh, the JEP operating, the JEP for Docker operating system support still isn't there, sorry. And we've closed this PR on plugin installation manager docs and we'll migrate the content of it, if any, into the plugin or into the tool itself. End of eight, Java 8 end of life alternatives. So Tim, this was a topic you wanted to be sure we address. Um, I specifically plan to write a Jenkins enhancement proposal to, to discuss project plan, et cetera. What were the things on your mind? I think it's, for me, it's mostly just deciding when. Um, kind of seems to just be doing nothing at the moment and not a lot of feedback in the mailing list recently. Uh, Like we can get we can get a date into an LTS line and set different um, set different dates for LTS and weekly, but we just need to decide when. Yeah. So and and for me, the challenge right now is I'm I'm doing some discussions um, at my employer about what this means and how the Jenkins enhancement proposal needs to be phrased, et cetera. So I expect to heat this thing up and start the conversations pretty actively again within the next five to seven working days, because I, I think we've got to get started on it. I agree that we need a, we need a date and we need a plan that, that supports that date and justifies it. And we can always push a date. We don't have to stick to it, but it's better to get something in there, especially that will kickstart conversations and questions. And if people come here with lots of objections, we can do it. But I think doing nothing is kind of the worst outcome. Right, exactly. So, so if, if we need to, if we need to, I like that point, if we need to slip the date or adjust the date, um, that's safer than not having the conversation. I was reading on the Oracle Oracle site. Oracle's Java site says that March of 2022 is when they end some kind of standard support and you have to switch to extended. Yeah. But, I mean... Then, but Red Hat supports it until 2022, 24. I, I, I mean, the language vendors are going to be probably the last ones to slip. It's all the other, other ones, and being two LTS versions behind is pretty is not great. Right. Like so you're always, going to, you're always going to be able to find someone who will support it in some way, but realistically, it's not getting any changes. It's not getting any enhancements. Um, it will be kept up with protocols and critical issues, um, and new possibly minor things to support new tooling, but it's, it's support is secu like security fixes. It's not support as in TLS 1.3 or whatever. Right. Or HTTP 3 or, or a modern HTTP client. Or... Yes. Yeah. yeah all, all valid points or, or in many cases, some of the, that mattered to, to me are things like, Hey, I think that the Java 11 support for some of the alternate architectures is just better, right? As, as the specific example for me is System 390 doesn't run the Java hotspot at all. It just doesn't for Java 8. You got to go to Java 11. And so it makes sense that, or, or the ARM support, I think, is even better in Java 11 than Java 8. And, and that's important to a lot of people. Yep, and Alpine is supported in like 17. Right, right, exactly. Alpine's another good example. So, so a wholehearted agreement that we need this thing and let's, let's 
accept that we're, there may be some controversy as we discuss it and negotiate back and forth. Um, JEP, JEP creation process is a bit rigorous for me. It's, a, it's, it's hard to do. I have to work hard to write it well. But let's set a goal that for next the next session of this meeting, which would be in two weeks, we've already it's already in a proposal available for next SIG meeting as a pull request. So that way I've I've got two weeks to work on it. We'll discuss it in the mailing list. It will heat things up and and we can have discussions back and forth. Yeah, I mean for me, I expect the main thing is just um, documentation around things like Maven builds. It's stuff that's been done before. Like realistically for 90, I would expect 90 plus percent of people, Java 11 shouldn't affect them at all. If not in the high nineties, all the core plugins work on it. Um, and then it's just whether you're building on controllers and how you're building. If you're doing it properly, it shouldn't really affect you. Right. And and I think you're right that the 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 major portion of people are not and even okay, let's let's take the, the example. We had a discussion on the HPE tandem nonstop stuff. And the answer there is sorry, some platforms may not be supported. We just we we can't hold ourselves back because there are platform vendors that don't want to do Java 11. That's that's just not not relevant to us. We've got to be allowed to move forward onto Java 11 and Java 17. Yeah, like realistically at this point, <laughs> Java 17 is really the target. Right. Um, and it's just yeah, about getting, getting there. But Java 11 is well battle tested. Uh, like, yeah, we're, we're moving to Java 17 now at work. Mm. And, and that makes sense, right? But we, we've, we've only got prototypes so that maybe that's a different topic for a future discussion is how do we get more Java 17 traction? It's, it's, it's daunting enough that we're talking just Java 11, Java 17 full support um, as a project. Yeah, good. Okay. Anything else on Java 8 end of life? Mm, no, I don't think so. Okay. So next topic then was Linux operating system support policy. I've proposed four tiers like we do for Windows. Um, uh, it has to be approved by the board, uh, needs developer list discussion first. The idea was AMD 64 as on RPM, DEB and and four specific platforms. Then second tier, which is supported, is ARM 64, S390X, PPC, et cetera, again, on supported platforms. Oh, and in tier one, the fully supported, it's all Docker operating systems that we support. So that means Alpine, uh, Debian, uh, Alma, et cetera. What's the reason you've got Microsoft lifecycle policy and Microsoft product lifecycle search linked in the references. Oh, oh, that's sad. That means a fix I need to make. I, I, sorry, I gotta get, I'll get that fixed right away. I should have, I, it's because I copied from the other originally. Let me get it's it out of there. That's nonsense. <laughs> yes, that, that, that's references should be to other things. What are you writing this in? What's that? Is this Emacs? This is oh sorry, you're seeing my screen. Yes, this is Emacs in a in a, a terminal emulator to a Linux machine. You don't use an ASCII doc. <laughs> is this got ASCII doc syntax? Uh, it is, yeah. So it's an it doing an ASCII doc highlighting thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's use VS Code. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've and I haven't I haven't learned enough yet to do all the VS Code things that I can do with with Emacs. Emacs does things for me that I, I'm deeply addicted to certain certain features. Yeah, and I'm not 
using too many crazy features when I'm writing documentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. Good, thanks, nice catch. Okay. Just watching your Emacs, it's nice. See how someone yeah. else <laughs> does something differently. Yeah, the, the whole pair programming miracle of, oh, wow, you did that, that's, yeah. I've learned more things by watching over people's, people's shoulders than any other form of learning, I think. All right, so operating system support policy. I assume that there's at least a week or two of discussion around that before it'll be finalized. Uh, finalization will require going to a governance board meeting and that's at least two weeks away. I assume you plan to link to the Red Hat and Debian support policies? Yes, of course. Yeah, and and Ubuntu and and probably several others just just to be sure that people know where to find, oh, this is the policy from that vendor or this vendor, yeah. All right, so any other topics you want? We, so there's this system five to system D transition thing that's, that's started that leaves me quite nervous, but I think we eventually need to do it just like we're transitioning off Java 11, I'm just, nervous because of the compatibility risks that are hiding in that thing. Yeah, <laughs> it should have been done a long time ago, but no one really wants to do it, I think. Right, right. If it's, it, it would be, it's, it's the right thing to do. It's the morally good thing to do. It's a healthy thing to do. It just scares me because of all the people who are going to complain terribly. You broke my XYZ thing that I'm depending on. Ubuntu 14, something that's still Eggs, exactly right. Or, or I hey, hey my system business day, is zero critically X. depend. Well, Devon, we had one just just reported. Say, please, please, if you solve this, do it in a way that still works with Devon, where Devon is a a system five based init system on Debian packages. It's like, no, I'm sorry, we're not going to keep both. So, yeah, complicated. And yeah, someone else I, can package. I, At this point, someone else can package it for system V, and if they want to keep it going i think right exactly the main, the main thing is just the upgrades i don't think we need to keep any compatibility just make sure an upgrade works right and 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 that's the upgrade story is the challenge for me i, I agree it's There's probably how do you make some it feature work? gaps or think thing because like shell scripts won't get expanded and stuff you 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 can predict that with as many novel ways as there are that people interact with init systems, there's something that is not going to work. Yeah, okay. just look at how other people have done it in the past, I guess, <laughs> kind of tempted to just say, <laughs> go a new package. Right. But I don't know, this kind of doesn't really make sense. <laughs> or, or, or whether the old one gets obsolete, I, I don't know how you'd do it. <laughs> yeah. That, it's, that's... It's, it's the package, other than creating a new repo. And just stopping updating the old one, I don't know. Actually, and maybe, maybe that's, I hadn't considered that. Let me think about that. That's a creative idea is just a whole new package that says mm -hmm. this is, and, and then we eventually stop delivering the system five based one. I like stop, that. I'd probably just stop delivering it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Excellent. Any other topics we need to go over today? Okay. Then use use Docker, not, not Linux packages. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. There's there's a moral in that story, but that's a different problem, right? It's uh, that, oh, oh, actually, I take it back. I've got another topic for you. The uh -huh. exit life cycle. That, that exit life cycle is an interesting one. I assume we'll just uh -huh. continue the discussions in the pull request. Because I think I think Basel's right that we should we should implement the exit lifecycle change he proposed, but we've got to worry about compatibility. I think it just needs an, yeah an update in the README, um, and problem is we don't really have a way of communicating with Docker users very well. <laughs> well, but but we can do a blog post, all right? A blog post. Or just or just in the upgrade. Guideline an or an entry in the it, in, in the, the weekly the change log. Yeah, I don't know if it needs a blog post. I think a weekly change log entry and upgrade guide probably. Yeah, and see, we don't because we don't have upgrade guides for weeklies. 
I'm prone to just use a blog post as the as the upgrade guide. Yeah, I mean, if you want to write one, welcome to. Um, Got it. Yeah, but I think so. I recreated the PR, um, and I think it just needs an update to the README really to change to add the on restart policies to all the Docker run commands. Oh, oh, that's a good point, right? Uh, Docker update the Docker run commands in the uh, online docs, README, etc. Because there there are mm. Docker run commands in some tutorials, and and those would be good places to remind people. Look, add this argument. You need it. Yeah, they probably won't need it so much in tutorials. I wouldn't expect they'd be restarting, but I mean, it's not going to hurt. But like, so like you're just going to start it up and you're going to install some stuff, but you don't need to restart when you're installing. Yeah, I thought that if I went through the plugin, if I went through the initial setup wizard, it it required a restart. I'll have to double check. Only if you're upgrading. Ah, okay. All right. Uh, Good. I wouldn't expect you to really hit it so much. Okay. Um, <laughs> the other annoying thing I noticed today is that the um the github action that um updates the plugin manager cli mm -hmm. um in the docker repo is um, <laughs> a bit liberal on what it updates and there happens to be a subversion plugin with the same version as the docker plugin cli and it and the action runs every 15 minutes so if i revert if i revert the version down the action the action updates it before i have before the build has time to complete <laughs> oh dear Okay, so it is being a very much too liberal, huh? It's choosing, choosing, choosing things that. Just, uh, I assume it's just searching the whole repo for that string. Uh, okay, interesting. It's kind of good because you don't know where it's going to appear, but also right. annoying that it appears somewhere else. And so if I remember, I will probably just create a new branch. <laughs> that's not great, but yeah, that's <laughs> it. Was annoying me this morning when I was like Ugh, and downgraded it. And then it had just upgraded itself before the build finished. That's the, the power of continuous thing, right? Any, mm -hmm. any continuous may be faster than I can do. Could fix it to exclude them, but then I also, or update specific files, but then I'm like, well, someone's going to add another Docker file and it's going to get missed or something. Right, right. Yeah, I, that makes sense. Yeah, simple, simple approaches. Okay. Any other topics for today? I don't think so. All right. Go Thanks. Back to, my Java, back to my Java 17 updates. Good luck with your Java 17 updates. Thanks all. I found a, actually, I found a really cool feature in Gradle with um, Gradle. There's a thing called Java or tool chains in Gradle. Uh -huh. um, it automatically detects your um, uh, what versions of Java you got installed on your machine based on package managers and SDK managers. Um, and you set the tool chain for what each like task needs and you can do different tasks in different versions and you can have Gradle running on a different version to what you actually build with. So what we've, what I've done on the CI is I've installed Java 11 and Java 17 from the package manager um, and set the default to be Java 11. And then in the Gradle file, you just set the tool chain for the build to be 17 and the and Gradle runs with 11, but I actually builds with 17 and it works completely out of the box. You don't have to change any home. You don't have to, um, you don't have to do any detecting of features or anything. It just, just works. So no, no, no meddling with Java home, no meddling with path variables. It just. No. So last time we used to, so last time when we upgraded from eight to 11, we ran a version to parse from Gradle, what they, what people had declared in the Gradle file to, to be their version. And then we set up the path based on the output of that. Um, but this time, Gradle has it completely built in, and it, and it just works fine. Nice, very nice. It's, yeah, so much simpler. Also, last time when when um if like when we were parsing the version out via Gradle, if any, if it died because like a plugin couldn't download or there was a network issue or something, <laughs> it said it couldn't it failed with an error saying couldn't detect Java version. And we got weird questions about it, and then if you read up, it turned out that oh. A plugin failed to download. It was completely unrelated. So very happy not to have to pass to do that this time. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks very much. Have a good weekend. All right. See you.